Komen, Colorado's newest CEO is former Democratic State Senator Diane Primavera of Broomfield, who's been on the job five months. More importantly, though, today you celebrate 29 years. Cancer free. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. You're expecting a smaller crowd for this year's race, smaller fundraising numbers than last year, and by both measures, the race is, is 80% smaller than it was at its peak when Denver's was the biggest in the world. How much longer do you think it's going to be around? Well, we hope a long time. You know, in addition to the fundraising that it does for our organization, people do it for a variety of reasons. I did it for the last 24 out of the last 25 years. I wasn't a big fundraiser at the time. But for me, every year that I did, it was a triumph. So, um, you know, it's our signature event. It's a community event. And, uh, you know, people, like I said, do it for a variety of reasons, to celebrate their life, um, to pay tribute to those who haven't been so lucky with their fight. People sometimes are just fitness experts and they want to get out there and, and do the race. But um, we're hoping, you know, we've, we've tried to do some new things this year to energize it. And we're hoping that we can continue to at least have a, a successful event. Maybe not the biggest in the country, but a successful event. You have scaled back your expenses on the race considerably from $275,000 last year to $100,000 this year. Even with that, you're expecting to take in less in fundraising than you did last year. Would you run it as a break-even event just for the esprit de corps, just for the, the feeling that it gives people? Or does it need to live on as a fundraiser? Um, it needs to live on as a fundraiser. Um, as you know, we're trying to get away from events being our, you know, being so reliant on events uh, for fundraising. So we have a lot of organizations that do it yourself, fundraisers. We have rallies for the cure. We have um, different things like that. But our fundraising staff um, is making some strategic plans to diversify our fundraising so that we can have more of a steady stream that we can depend on. It, uh, that's something that your predecessor, who lasted six months in the job, told me when she was here last year that you had to move away from the event model. So what does that look like? What's that going to look like to people at home if it's not a sea of pink in, in the streets once a year? Well, hopefully we will have a sea of pink still. And you know we will have our pink tie event, and we'll have our snowshoe event. So those are the three major events you know that we do. Um, you know We're trying to figure out um, different ways to have Sometimes people donate once, but then they don't donate again. So we're trying to figure out how we can make people into um, continuous fundraisers, for one. Um, oftentimes, and even myself, you know, I've got a, a history with breast cancer. I have two daughters that I could leave all my money to. And it wasn't until I really got to Coleman that I thought, you know, what would 5000 or $10,000 hurt my daughters? So um, we're trying to get people to realize that, you know, our work can live on even after perhaps someone has... Uh, passed from the illness or that kind of thing. So estate planning is something that we'd like to get into as well. And then we're trying to figure out ways to get grant money. You know, we're solely dependent on donations. We get no government funds. So um, we've been checking into some grant funding as well. You certainly know that there are folks, politically speaking, on the left and right who have stopped giving to Komen after the national organization so badly stepped in it five years ago, pulling funding from Planned Parenthood, then restoring it. So they managed to make everybody angry all at once, which you as a former politician know is not easy to do, to make everybody <laughs> equally angry with you. Mm -hmm. That still lingers, though, for you guys. Yes, it does still linger. And it's really a shame because, you know, our vision is a world without breast cancer. And Komen, um, despite the Planned Parenthood um, political situation, gives more money to global research on breast cancer than anybody next to the federal government. So the strides that we've made with our research dollars have been amazing. Uh, the money that we've invested into our community has saved lives. And so it's a shame that that takes away from the good work that Komen really does. 19 Komen chapters across the country have closed or merged in the last five years. The Phoenix affiliate recently mm -hmm. shut down. They cited declining race participation, declining race fundraising, even though they were pulling in more from their race than you guys are. Is Coleman, Colorado going to be around in two, three years? I believe so. You know, we, we're doing everything we can. Uh, we're financially solvent right now. Um, as I said, we're trying to diversify our funding stream so that we don't depend so heavily on race and pink tie and snowshoe and those kinds of things. So um, I think if we do some strategic planning, we've got a great board. I couldn't have a better staff. You know, we have fabulous volunteers, and I just can't imagine that Coleman, Colorado won't exist. Have the national folks come to you guys about a merger or a dissolution? No. They haven't. If they were to come to you guys, would you consider going independent to stay afloat? Would you consider breaking and staying independent? 
or going independent rather? You know, I'm probably too new to answer that question. Um, I think we get a lot of benefit from the Komen brand and I know we get a lot of benefit from the Komen research dollars that are spent so I would think that we would um, try and stay in the affiliate if it was beneficial for both the national headquarters and for us and for our patients. A, a final question that I asked last year, I'm not sure that we got a clear answer to it, and I know that you're only five months into the job, but maybe you can help crystallize this for us. You're in a situation with declining fundraising resources. What are your priorities to say, we must fund this, we must keep doing this? And this other thing, while it was great, is just not something that Coleman Colorado can do anymore. What have you had to give up doing or will have to give up doing to preserve what you see as the core? Um, I we're breathing new life into the race this year. As you know, we've got a new location. Um, we've got several new um, pieces to the race that I think are really impactful. Um, the Grace Project is one of those. I don't know if you'll have a chance to come down and see that, but that's really impactful. Um, we have a kids zone because, you know, when, my, when I was diagnosed, my kids were four and six, and we realized that it, you know, it affects families as well. Um, some of the things we have talked about, in, in addition to our strategic uh, funding that we need to look at, is whether or not we should really continue to grant the money out the way we have done it. Um, you know, we haven't done a great job telling our story. We haven't done a great job telling about the lives we've saved. So we've thought about how we could move more towards a direct service model and actually provide some direct services to um, people undergoing breast cancer treatment. So that might be something that we look at too in addition to our fundraising is how do we spend that money and, and what model do we used to do that. So rather than rather than cut a check to another organization to provide services, get into the business of providing some of those services yourself. Some of them, yeah. I think there's some things we could do to to make Komen more reactive to what really is needed out there in the community. Could you give me an example or two? We'll wrap up with that. Well, you know, I think for one thing, we don't do a lot with uh, support groups uh, run through Komen. I think that might be something that we could uh, take a look at. Um, people contact us, they're going through metastatic breast cancer treatment, they have nobody to talk to, nowhere to turn. And when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, they said people who survive the illness the best are people who of course get good treatment um, as sooner than later, and people that openly talk about their illness. So I think that's one service that we could perhaps look at to provide. And then I don't think we do a very good job helping people with their finances um, when they're diagnosed. Um, it can be bankrupting, and so I think if we could work on the financial toxicity that happens when people are diagnosed, um, that would be something that would be really beneficial as well. Appreciate your time. Thank you for coming by and a very busy week as you guys get ready for the race. For all the folks who are watching this full, extended, unedited version on YouTube, uh, we'll get in our disclosures here. Uh, I was a previous donor to Komen prior to the political dust up in 2012, uh, and my mother is a survivor. Congratulations on 29 years. Thank and, you. And uh, best wishes for a great weekend. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you.